Okay, Photoshop Senior Edition, folks. We've got a treat today because George Stone has graciously uh, allowed us to work on his great gray owls here. And this is the photograph that we're going to work on exclusively today. And what we're going to do is take them uh, from this particular shot and put them together in a different background. And you see we've got like a pano uh, view and we've got a building in the background here. And so we're going to bring the two together bring them closer together and find a different background. So we have to take them out of this background and do something else with them. So we're going to, you know, do some steps uh, to do that. But you folks alone are going to uh, be doing this. Uh, outsiders are not going to have the ability to do this because uh, George has only allowed you guys the right to do this and I think it's great and appreciate him allowing that so only you folks are going to have the link to download these images and only you folks are going to have the link to see the video so let's get started I'm excited to hope you are so here we are with the images inside of Photoshop and what we have to do is make a selection around each one of these owls great gray owls so let's do what we normally do and let's first save this image to our hard drive in case the worst case scenario happens Photoshop crashes or whatever so let's uh, do a save as and save it to our computer and hopefully yours is just like mine you have Call of Duty everywhere on it I have saved mine as Owls by George Stone and make sure you save it as a PSD file so that you can have those layers saved right along with your file uh, if you save it as a PSD or as a JPEG or any of those others it's not going to save your layers it will if you use TIFF it will but right now I think you need to stick with PSD file once you do that click Save and again I would choose the desktop to work with unless you have a specific place on your computer that you like to save those files <clears throat> click Save I'm gonna cancel mine because I've already got it saved actually I'm gonna save a new copy so I can start working fresh I'm just going to put in a underscore remember when you're naming your files <clears throat> don't leave spaces and don't use uh, crazy characters like question marks and things like that underscores are easily recognized by other computers uh, so I use those for space markers and I'm going to put copy to uh, but if you use spaces a lot of times uh, browsers like if you're out on the internet if you have an image out there on the internet somewhere stored and you have a space in it a lot of browsers don't know how to handle that and it will not open your file so I always save files just like I'm going to put them on the internet. You don't have to if you're never going to do that, but that's I'm I'm a former webmaster, so that's the habit I got into is separating my words uh, using uh, underscore. All right, let's uh, go ahead and do a Control J to make a exact copy of this first layer. So Control or Command on a Macintosh. J makes a exact copy of it so let's start on the left hand side with the owl over here on the left I'm holding down my control key and the space bar and left clicking a few times to enlarge this left owl <clears throat> and then I'm going to go up here to the uh, quick selection tool 
because I want to just uh, select this owl as quickly as I can. There's no sense uh, using the path selection tool or anything like that, or the path tool. Uh, I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use my right bracket key to make the brush bigger. Left bracket key, remember, makes it smaller. Uh, I would make it about this size and just paint with it. Notice some of our edges aren't great yet. We'll worry about that in a minute. You don't want to go outside the borders, but you want it to come up to the edges. See, we're outside the border there. We'll just kind of paint. We'll worry about the, the borders uh, here in a minute. Just kind of paint. Now, if you remember, I've said before, Photoshop learns, especially on this particular tool, the quick selection tool. Now, I want to deselect. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger yet. I'm going to hold down my control or, op or uh, command key, space bar, and I'm going to click. I'm going to make my brush smaller, left bracket key, and I'm going to hold down my alt option key on a Mac and it turns into a minus sign and I paint I tell it to come to that edge I keep doing it and it learns now notice right here there's a little bit of feather that it didn't select so make my brush smaller and paint now see it's made a nice transition right there let's come over to the other side Here's some feather that it didn't select. So I'm painting. Nice job. Here it's outside. So alter option. Get that. So don't hold down the alter option here. We just add to it by keep selecting. Now it went too far. So alt key or option on Mac. There we go. That may act a little bit differently on yours. That's okay. It'll keep refining itself as we go. And alt. Right there, a little bit. Good. Now there's a little bit of feathering right along here. Just click the edges. It learns, see? Just want to get those little details in there. You don't want to cut the feathers of an owl off. A little bit right up here. Now the photograph is back just far enough that there's a little softness around the edge so it's not going to get ultra sharp details around the sides. See how the some of the feathers are really soft on the edge? Looking pretty good. Okay, we're not going to go over there and select. I'm going to do a control. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Command or control space bar minus. Just click the minus key to zoom back out. Now I'm holding down the space bar so I can just move it. We got a pretty good selection. If you want to go to Refine Edge, you can see we also have a selection of the eyeball. We don't want that. So we cancel that, and now you can see the margin answer in there. So to fix that, we simply hold down the Alt key and we paint, sorry, do a Control Z of that. Hold down, just hold down the, make the brush bigger, and just click that, because we want to add to that. So now that went away. Now we can hit Refine Edge and look at it. There we go. So I don't think we have anything we really need to refine. The edges look really, really nice. So we just go ahead and cancel that. And all we have to do 
is control J. So we do a control J and that copies this owl to its own layer. So if I turn the other two layers off, that's all we have. One owl. And if we look at the edges, they look pretty good. I'm holding down the space bar, just moving around and looking. We did a pretty good job making the selection. So control minus to zoom back out. I can do a control zero to fill the page again with the, the entire image. I'll turn them back on so we can see. <clears throat> now we need to go get the other owl, right? So we click on this layer. We'll turn this layer off. It looks like it's still on, but that layer is turned off. All right, let's zoom in now on the owl on this side. So I'll hold down the control or command key, the space bar, and start clicking until we get this one nice and big. Now to move it over, just hold down the space bar, move it over. All right, now we're on the, the um, quick selection tool already. So we can begin. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger or smaller, sorry, left bracket key. And I'm just going to start painting with selection. I'm not going to worry about getting perfect on the edges right now. I'm just going to make a general paint. Try to get everything modestly selected for now. Come on down here and over here. All right, let's zoom in a little bit more. So hold down the control or command key, space bar down, and click along the edge. And we see we've got a little bit. This looks good down here. Make the brush smaller, left bracket key. And let's just click right here. Now see we got way too far. So hold down the Alt key, Option key on a Mac, and I'm just going to paint right through this, just kind of a straight line, and see how it snapped back. Then we Alt key or Option key. I think we got a little feather right here. I'm going to click it once. There we go. Right here we got a little bit of feathering going on right here right here right here I realize some of this it, you know it's got to be your call uh, on feather whether to keep it or not some of it could be like a, a little bit of shadow I'm just kinda clicking see how much it's learned already it's done a nice job selecting those edges. <clears throat> it's clicking those edges, watching it snap out there. I'm going to get this. There we go. Right there. And then we got to get a little bit of that off. So Alt or Option click. Nice. A little feathering right here. Right here is a little feather. Right here is a little feather. And looks pretty good. Let's zoom out. Control or Command minus. Then spacebar. Hold the spacebar down. Click and drag. The eyeballs don't appear to be selected. Let's hit the refine edge and see what we got. Let's move this over. Looks pretty good. I think what I would do in this case, <clears throat> see this looks a little uh, funny right here and right here and maybe right here. Uh, let's just click OK and we'll do a Control J again and put this also on its own layer. So Control J 
Now we'll turn both of these off so you can see this. Now what I suggest we do is put a mask on this. So we just go down here to the square donut at the bottom of the layers palette and click that to put this layer mask on. And then what we're going to do is see about these feathers. Let's say, make sure that black is on top of white. If not, hit the letter D as in dog on your keyboard. And then we're going to paint. Uh, turn on your brush. Make it 100%. Make it soft. Nice soft brush. Hardness all the way to the left. Make it small, about like this, and we're just going to go along here a little bit, kind of cut some of that down. Come up here, and here. That all is fine, and right here. Going to paint a little bit of that back and right here. Now, that's not gone, okay? If I right click on that and say disable layer mask, you see it's all still there. So if I want, I'm going to enable that again. If I want to flip the colors over here, I can paint that right back in. But I, I really think it's going to look better. I'm going to paint that back out. Now, you can control that edge better. See, that edge is nice and smooth. So And this is soft. So probably would be better if I change this smoothness to around, uh, let's say, 70 and let's bring this back and let's take it back off again but this time with that 70 to make it smooth let's do that same thing over here let's bring it back and take it back off changed it back to black and I'm going to take it back off with a smoother edge instead of soft. Now I think that looks better. All right, so we have now both of the great gray owls, but they're on different layers. What I'm going to do is bring the two of them together. And all I need to do is go to this layer, layer 2, and merge it down to this layer. Okay, so I can do a Control e or Command-E on a Mac. And what I need to do is it's going to merge this mask also. Or I can preserve it. And I think I'm going to preserve it. So the mask is still there. But now these guys are both on the same layer. Okay. I can also, at this point, move the two of these guys together. So if I click on this one. Actually, what I need to do. I needed to move them. <laughs> Uh, while they're still on separate layers. Sorry about that. I'm going to control alt Z command uh, Option Z on a Mac and I'm going to go ahead and move the owl up here on layer 2 which is this guy and Move tools on or press the letter V V as in victory and now I'm holding down the shift key because otherwise I can move him all over the place. If I hold down the move tool, it'll move it in a straight 
uh, action for me so it doesn't go off course, so to speak. So now these guys are closer together. I can, I can move them as close as I want or keep them as far apart as I want. Moving them side by side uh, probably isn't going to be as effective. We want to see a little distance between the two. So now I can uh, crop this down a bit and put them in another scene. I don't know that I want them quite this close, but that's up to the artist uh, how close they want them. Now this this guy over here on the right has his head cocked back left and he's looking straight into the camera. This guy has got his head cocked to the right looking back to the left. So it could be that this guy is better off over here hard to say you know now they both have their head cocks back towards the center now I you know if I were the photographer I would probably want to keep their orientation the same but that's you know that's just a thought so now we have to consider cropping the image and we have a you know a format here of a panoramic so now we're thinking in terms of now we brought these two uh, gray owls together we're thinking in terms more of maybe something more traditional uh, how about you know looking at an 8 by 10 here so Let's think in terms of an 8x10 at 300%. Let's see here. And obviously, we're talking about some cropping if we're not careful. So we, we're extending the palette. And we can do that with the crop tool now. Uh, we're, we're reaching outside of the normal area that we had. So now if we hit enter, or let's double click inside that framework, and it created space for us. I did a control or a command minus there. So it created additional space. And if you look in our layers palette now, you'll see that the original pano is now um, totally reformatted. So if I back up in history, there's where, you know, this is the format where we were, or if I go back over here, there's the original format. Now we're here. So <clears throat> let me show you a couple of things that we can do, at least a couple. Uh, one of the first things I thought about was uh, creating some wood to go behind them, just the woodsy owl type theme, I guess, is what I was thinking of. So to do that, we need to fill uh, the background in with a color. And <clears throat> now uh, this stuff down here is pretty much uh, not needed. And some time ago, I should have done a an S, a control or a command S. And probably now is a good time to go ahead and do that before we go one more step. Uh, just a control or command on your computer, S, which saves it uh, back to that file name that we gave it when we started. You know, that's such a simple step, and let me just uh, say, it's something that we should do every time we create a layer, uh, any time we do a crop, anything we do that's major. Now, let me show you a common mistake. If we go to Edit and go down to Preferences, I know it's off your screen right now. Uh, let me let me move the recording area down. Uh, if I go to Edit and go down to Preferences and just click on General uh, Sync File Handling, right here. 
automatically save uh, recovery information every five minutes. You know, do that. Change that. Automatically save recovery information every five minutes. Now, this won't work at all if you don't do the original uh, save as a PSD format to begin with. And then click OK, and then, you know, then you can uh, not have to worry about the uh, things so much. It will uh, at least save your stuff every five minutes, which is a big deal. A very big deal. Okay, onward and upward. Let's go in here and let's just... Uh, hit delete or backspace on your computer and with this layer uh, turn it on and let's go find a nice brownish color over here in the color picker so just click on the color picker and somewhere over in here you know run your colors down till you find uh, between yellow and orange there's gonna be a brown click OK and then to fill with this color it's simply holding down your alt or option key and hit backspace and that's not very dark so you simply click back on your color picker again and you just come down from where you are you know where your last pick was and here's a much darker color so to fill it with that alt or option backspace so there you go and that's pretty dark so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit Oh, alt. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a copy of that, control J, just because I want to. I'm going to do control S to save it. Not hard, was it? So there, there's brown. <laughs> All right. The, the, the owls look very, very flat right now. And for our peace of mind, we could run up there and put drop shadows on them and make them look a lot better, but... We're going to move ahead a little bit instead. So we, we've got, uh, we've still got these uh, little enhancements out there in that, uh, on, on that uh, mask, dealing with the feathers, remember? So that's still there if we want to tweak those feathers. Still yet. Just keep that in mind. So, and, and I don't have room over here because it's extra large so you can see what's going on but we could you know type in there a little bit about that layer which is very helpful like left owl <clears throat> and you know you can have right owl or you could actually mention feather adjustments or something like that but what I really want to do right here is create a layer and and make this uh, wood grain. I want to give that wood effect to this. So I'm going to create a, another layer. Click on the new layer icon down here at the bottom of the layers palette. It's just blank. So go over to edit, fill, and instead of foreground color or whatever it may default as, you want to fill this with 50% gray. Click OK. Now to this 50% gray, I want to add noise. And to do that, I'm going to go up to filter noise and add noise. Filter noise, add noise. Now, <clears throat> you got to make sure of a couple of things here. Number one, uh, you want Gaussian, number two, monochromatic. Then you look in your little preview window, and you also see the noise over here. But you can, you know, turn this on and see how much noise you're getting over here as well. But if uniform is on, <clears throat> it, it's not going to work as well. And if you have monochromatic unchecked, you get color noise in the image, which 
so will not work. So uh, uniform still going to work, but Gaussian will work much better. So let's put in a pretty good amount of noise and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to hold down control or command and you see that's what we've got as far as noise. Now what we're going to do is filter blur motion blur because what we want to do is cause this streaking. So I've got 104 distance in the pixels. Now that's based uh, on the quality or the resolution of the image. Uh, it's so going to be different uh, based on the image you have. So if, if you know this is a 300 resolution image so based on that this is what you get. So your, your image, uh, your adjustments may change uh, depending on the image that you're working on. So let's zoom out a little bit. So you see what what we call graininess going on, and then you've got these uh, crazy edges. So <clears throat> what we need to do to elim eliminate those crazy edges is a Control T. So Control T turns on transform, and so allows us to transform this layer, which is the gray layer. So we're just gonna drag that crazy edge stuff off and you can also drag this off too if you see an area that looks cooler somewhere else now the other part is let's let's do a control or command minus to make this smaller because we also sometimes benefit by expanding the texture because you got to remember this is supposed to look like wood texture. Okay, so I'm going to double click to commit to the transformation. <clears throat> now I'm going to make it bigger. Now then, we need to change the blend mode to interact with the brown that's below it to give it the wood color. Color. I can't pronounce it right. Overlay. So now you can see uh, how it's supposed to look like wood. You can experiment with some of the other colors. That looks like gray wood. And that's a, a harder grain color. You could use that if you choose. I'm going to go with the overlay. And uh, like I said earlier, you can change the color of the wood, uh, make it darker if you choose. That's that's all your call. Uh, again, I'm going to change the color of this wood using the Alt key or Option key and Backspace. So you can make it as dark as you would like. Again, you can change the graininess of this wood with this you can totally fill that with noise again you can transform that wood it's going to happen differently every time uh, you can ex you know do the control T and expand it and pull it and all that stuff and it's going to change it as well and we could have left uh, you know cropped it wider left more space yada 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 uh, now let's go and put some drop shadows down. So I'm going to go to the left owl, go down to the FX button, and click on drop shadow. Now if you look at the eyes and look at the light on the bird, the light appears to be coming more from a uh, direction this angle. Okay, so let's uh, bring the shadow out this direction so to speak a little bit but here's what we need to do we need to change the size we need to change the spread and let's change the distance a little bit maybe drop the opacity a bit what we really need to do is make the distance between the background 
and the foreground as much as we can or separate the two as much as we can and then again we can click and drag that a little bit and we can we're satisfied we can click OK now <clears throat> the effects are right here it's not permanent if I double click that again I go right back in my settings are right here I can spread it more right I can change the size so we're good now I like that let's say I like what I got here should I have to go in and make all those same adjustments adjustments on this owl as well well no I can go over here on this FX right click on it and right down here at the uh, you can't see it let me move the recording area again if I go to the FX right click go down here copy layer style then I move down to this layer and right click paste layer style so now this owl has the exact same drop shadow and you see it's also as editable as this owl so let's do a quick F F and I realize let me move the recording area again and you can see how that looks okay that's one thing that we can do with this me F F here again and reestablish my recording area all my controls have to be moved and everything okay I think we're back right now I have another little uh, thing for you to download and experiment with if I do a go to my bridge right here is a old farm and well as we have is a roof and a limb basically and double click it and here it is so what I want to do is take this image I don't know why it's wanting to crop okay we want to take this image and put it into the other image and have the owls in it so let's do a control A control C control A copies all of this or actually selects all of this control C copies it to the virtual clipboard and then we want to come over here and do a control V V as in victory and that pastes that into this image and let's just move the stacking order to where it's below the owls and let's zoom out a bit let's uh, do a control or command minus so we can actually resize the limb image to fit inside where the owls are so let's do a control T and I'm holding down the shift key to resize it perspective wise as best I can now I'm gonna have to kinda of scooch it with with you know without the control key down just moving it over now I'm not going to try to put them on the limbs or or something like that because then I'm going to have to make them so small uh, they're not going to be real viewable we're going to visually and in our brains assume they're sitting on another limb somewhere else so now I'm going to turn that off because every time I do something that we see the okay 
Now there's an issue. Uh, we have a drop shadow now that's going all the way back into the trees and on the roof and all that stuff. So we need to turn these eyeballs off behind these guys, right? <clears throat> so now we have the owls in a totally different background. So there are all kinds of uh, backgrounds that we can bring into these images. Uh, once we remove uh, wildlife or people from one image, we can virtually bring them into about any image we want to, as long as they're a reasonable um, quality. You know, if they're uh, like these uh, two owls, they're, they're very sharp and they're very clear, but the image here isn't quite as clear. Well, it's in the background, so that works okay. But if this were uh, supposed to be a sharp background, uh, as sharp as the owls are, then that wouldn't work very well. So you have to be aware of, of factors like that. But if we, again, let me, uh, I'm going to move the, uh, the uh, image a little bit, our framing area, so you can see uh, this whole thing larger, I think, if I can make it larger. I hope you're able to see it better. I can't see the recording area. Let me make it a little bit smaller. So it makes a nice image like that. But, uh, very, very cool. So here I've got a get my recording area back again. So it, it becomes um, a matter of you discovering, uh, using your imagination as to where uh, your subject would best be suited. What kind of a background would work? Or do you want to create a background and, and do this kind of a, a thing with it where you just create your own background and put drop shadows on something. You know, that, that that's not a bad thing either. It makes an interesting uh, deal, too. But I think having the landscape, you know, makes it more real, more interesting. Um, just gives it that look. Here, you know, this is where those guys belong sort of a thing um, but you know I, I remember uh, an image uh, years ago that I was given by the FBI to work on where uh, a suspected bank robber uh, had a person a bit, uh, with them they needed removed and uh, because they only wanted to post uh, send out all over the country the image of the suspect not the other person as well and you know you get you got to be able to uh, sometimes eliminate as we did these guys we eliminated the background we isolated them and brought them into a new place and uh, that's that's the the key to a lot of Photoshop is you know making those good selections number one and if you do that you can you know, make things much more believable. You can you can add you know your subjects to other places, do other things with them, and really come up with some interesting compositions. Here's another, for instance, just to kind of seal this whole deal up. Here's a deer caught by surprise. I was on a, one side of a pond. I saw this deer coming up towards the pond, it was a breezy day, and I was downwind of the deer, and I knew it was trying to sniff me out. And I got on the other side of this pond and got down low, and when the deer came across the pond, looking to see what I was, I was right there, and uh, uh, you can't really <laughs> get an expression off of a deer's face. But 
believe me, this deer was surprised because there I was, as soon as she topped the hill, I was there with my uh, zoom lens and got this picture and the next uh, split second, she had tossed her head around the opposite direction and was gone. All I saw was her tail straight up in the air in the next scene. So here, here's what we need to do. Turn on that quick selection tool again and start anywhere you want, but zoom in so you can make sure you get those details and just start selecting. Don't worry about anything that might be missed right now. We'll, we'll come back and make those adjustments as we need to. And it did a great job down through here and alt key or option key on a Mac to make it snap back to those edges and we'll go back through here with a fine tooth comb alt key option key down and let's just stroke at it a little bit till we get it to behave it's good going around there we don't need that we need that so don't hold the option key down or the alt key and we need that and we don't need that over there so hold down the alter option key looks good through there I think we've got it but let's do a quick look at refine edge now you can see some shaky jiggity things going on around here and I don't like any of that so let's experiment so let's go over and let's smooth just a little bit and let's go to shift edge a little bit And don't I don't recommend feathering usually let's just try to stay with smooth and shift edge shift edge will bring the edge in just a little bit did a control minus there to see what it would do I think we're getting there back looks pretty good around the ears looks pretty good so let's do a uh, new layer with layer mask and then click OK so now we see the new layer with layer mask let's just apply the layer mask I think we're gonna be uh, so that's got its own on its own layer uh, so let's uh, make a copy of that so do a control A to make a, a selection around everything that's there let me make that smaller so you can see there's a selection around everything there so that's the control A to select everything control C to copy it to the digital clipboard then we're going to go over to this image that has a couple of deer already on it if you don't have it loaded uh, this isn't a high quality image by any stretch it's just for a background and you may want to throw this on a background of your own this is just a general deer shot nothing special we're going to do a control V as in victory to put that in there and then let's just turn on the move tool pressing the letter V as in victory and just let's just put it over here in the corner now it's covering up that other deer that didn't, didn't make any difference it's fine right over there now it's reddish and uh, we're gonna fix that now right up here and we have to do this to a lot of things we bring into other images so don't get excited right up here this is the use saturation adjustment layer 
So we just click that. Now, notice right off the bat, it created, the, this is the symbol for what this is. And then it created its own mask, so we can control it completely. But what we want to do is make sure it's clipped to just this layer. Otherwise, if we change this, it's affecting the whole image. Okay, we don't want that. So if we click that, now it's only going to affect the layer underneath it. And that's what we do want. So we want to just change our sliders. Uh, to affect this deer, we want to just kind of change it to fit the background is is what we're doing. So we're just going to lighten that deer up to make it look like it belongs in that image. And I think that pretty well does it. So that just gives you another example of bringing a, a, an object, in this case a deer, the other case the owls, uh, from one place and in inserting them into another place, another image. And I think it works here as it did with the owls. And uh, hopefully this gives you some uh, good examples of how to apply that, how to knock them out of one place, put them in another place. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's uh, lesson on uh, how to make selections and knock out your subjects and put them in a new background. I've enjoyed bringing it to you, and hopefully you find this useful for future projects. I look forward to the next one. See you all later. Bye-bye.